Hey, welcome back to this week's episode of On The Level Leadership. My name is Tammy and I'm your leadership and career growth coach. I'm here to help you be the best leader you can be so that you can grow in your career. As leaders and as managers, we have a lot of say, can have a lot of power actually, in how our employees are developed. And you can do it in two ways. You can either coach or you can mentor them. So this week, I want to explore those two pieces. Hey, welcome back to this week's episode, and I'm so glad that you made it here. So, you know, I really wanted to tackle this because it is really important that as managers, as leaders in organizations, that we find ways to grow the people that work with us and for us. And while there are other ways that we can grow employees through things like job shadowing, through things like training, through things like participating in organizational wide exercises or case studies. The reality is, is that there are two ways that you as a leader can directly impact an employee. The first is coaching and the second is mentorship. Now, coaching skills is something that as a leader, you may or may not have down pat because coaching is not about directing and it's not about telling somebody what to do. It's about teasing out from them what they think the solutions are for them. So if you're looking at career growth or career development, you might have ideas about what your employees should be doing. And that I can cover a little bit in the mentoring side of the house. But for coaching, you want to do things like ask open-ended questions. So when you're doing a performance review of your employee, for example, one thing I used to do is I used to ask questions, things like, what do you think you do well? What do you think you could imp- areas you could improve on? What do you think you could do more of? What could you do less of? These are really important questions because they're fairly open-ended and it allows the employee to really reflect on, well, what do I do well? What could I do better? What could I show up more for? So that they can sort of tease that out of themselves. This is really important and key because you want the employee to have buy-in to whatever action is going to come out of this conversation you're having with them. Coaching is about active listening. So that is about asking the open-ended questioning and then shutting the hell up and letting the person talk. And when they say, I, I think I could do this, you should be asking questions like, well, what more could you do? What else is there? You know, such as... These are the kinds of questions you want to ask so that you can dive deeper with the employee as to the kinds of things that they can do and explore the full gamut of options of what they can do, how they can behave, the choices they can make, the training they might consider, all of that. That needs to come from inside because, again, you're going to get more buy-in from the employee if they themselves have identified it. I don't know about you, but when somebody tells me something to do, if something tells me to do something, they're wrong, I'm right, I don't want to do it. Plain and simple. But if I say I think I need to do something, then it's my idea and I'm taking ownership of it and I'm not being told to do it. I'm agreeing to do it right off the bat by saying that I want to do these things. So the buy-in really shifts completely in that conversation. So if if you found in the past that you were getting a lot of resistance from your employees when you were providing uh, performance suggestions in terms of what they can do, then try the coaching piece. Try asking open-ended questions and see what they come up with because ultimately... If they've said it, then they're right. If you've said it, then you're wrong. You want to turn this around and ensure that you get the buy-in. So coach them, ask open-ended questions, and then actively listen. You can also, coaching is all about asking powerful questions. So it's about challenging their thought processes. It's about challenging their roadblocks. So if they say, I can't do this because, challenge it. Ask them what makes them think they can't push beyond that. What makes you think you can't do this? Really raise the self-awareness around what their skills are. Ask them questions like, what do you think your strengths are? If I asked your team members what your strengths are, what would they say? The whole point of coaching is about raising self-awareness. It's about helping them problem solve their own issues. And it's about providing the support and the space, giving them the space to really have that conversation with you and to think things through. Because as I was just discussing with a client today, or potential client today, When we don't have the space to think, we don't have the time to really mull these things over. And so we get kind of mired in the day-to-day operational requirements or strategic objectives. We don't really think about the next steps or what's logical for us in terms of our personal growth, professional growth, or in terms of our career progression. There's also, the coaching piece is also about accountability. When I coach a client, my job is not to do the work for them. 
In fact, if a coach is doing more work than the client, then you're not serving the client, period. So my job as a coach is to hold you accountable. So when you say to me, I would like to do this and I'm going to do this by a certain time frame, my, my job as a coach is to say, so that thing you committed to, how's that going? Have you managed to get through it? What kinds of obstacles came up for you? How did you manage them? What helped you move through those obstacles? How did you overcome these issues? What success did you get? How did you feel with that success? How did that feel to get this thing done? What's possible for you if you can get this done? Like these are the kinds of questions that you're coaching your staff to really get a sense of what is in their brains and how they think they can progress. Not what you think is best for them, but what they think is best for them. That's how you coach your employees. Now, the second part to this is mentoring. So mentoring is important as well, though, because mentoring is all about providing advice and helping people on the career development pathway. So you've been there before. You know what they've been through. You've maybe worked your way up the chain. Maybe you've gone from manager to director to director to executive director to vice president. And you know what that trajectory means. You know what it requires. You know the skills that you need. You know the training you need. You know the aptitudes you need to build. And so as their boss or as their colleague, senior colleague, if you're their mentor, you're there to help them progress in their career. Maybe point them in the right direction, provide a resource that you think is going to help them. Now, coaches can do that too. But mentors are really, their focus is really about, you know, you want to become a director. So something I am actually helping a client with right now is I'm coaching them to go through competitive processes in the government in order to become an executive. Having been an executive, I know what that means. So what does that mean? It means that when I'm coaching her, I also take the coaching hat off and I mentor at a time. I'll say, you know, what I might recommend is you consider this language or saying things in this way or demonstrating it in that manner. There's a, there's room in this coach mentor relationship with your employees, you can do both, but you need to be really clear that when you're coaching, you're coaching in the sense that you're asking open-ended questions. And when you're asking open-ended questions, that's not the time to mentor. Not necessarily. You want them to kind of tease things out for themselves. If they're really struggling, they're really not sure where to go next. That's when you become the mentor and say, okay, so it seems like you're challenged with the next steps on this piece. Might I recommend X, Y, Z? The other piece to, and, and mentorship is not performance management. I want to be clear about that. Performance management is about, here's your role where you are and you're not coping. So we need to performance manage you. And as your manager, I'm seeing that you're not dealing with this role. You're not meeting the targets. And in order for you to just be able to do this bare minimum, you need to do this training, that training, go on this course, that course. And I need you to be able to demonstrate these competencies. That is performance management. But mentorship is about growth. So there's a difference. You're managing people in their day-to-day -day job. That's different from mentoring, which is growth. It's about bringing somebody to the next level, providing them a sounding board for what they are thinking. And I mentioned job shadowing before as a way to grow your staff. That's also part of mentorship. So as a mentor, say you're at an executive director level and you have a director who wants to get to that level, you can certainly work out, depending on your organization and how things work in your organization, you could probably work it out where that person job shadows you maybe a day a week so that they can go to your meetings, participate in your calls, and be part of your decision-making processes so they can understand sort of that larger context at that level, get a sense of the accountability and responsibility that you have, get a real sense of what the job entails, what kind of skills and competencies are required at that level, and they can sort of visually see and be a part of the process so that they themselves can really um, grow as leaders themselves. And they can figure out, okay, well, this part of the job, I have a gap in that. So I need to develop these areas of my competencies in order for me to grow at that level. So again, you can sponsor the growth of an employee by having them job shadow you. It may not be every week, it might be every other week, but if there is room for that in your organization, I would highly recommend it. So that's it for this week's video. Short, sweet, to the point. You can develop employees as a manager and as a leader. It's really simple. You can either coach them or you can mentor them. And there are a variety of ways and a variety of questions and a variety of skills that you can really learn and take on to help you with that. So if you are looking for a coach yourself, you want to grow, you want to build your own capacity as a leader, and maybe you don't want to work with somebody internal to your organization, that's fair. You can certainly call me. Uh, there's a calendar link down below. Click on that. Book some time in my calendar and I will let you know if I can help you out or not. If you got anything out of this video on YouTube, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to this channel and or you can follow this podcast for more weekly information on leadership and or career growth type of topics because that's what I cover.
Anyway, thanks for being here this week. I do appreciate you taking the time. Until next week, take care.